I'm Jen Kilborn. And I'm Melissa Klug. And you're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. We want to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry and to give you the confidence you need to grow the business that you want. With strategies designed specifically for professional organizers, we hope to inspire you wherever you are on your journey of entrepreneurship. We're so happy you're here with us. Now let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's your podcast co-host, Melissa, and I am back with you. I had an awesome, hilarious experience the other day. I was super frazzled. I was in the container store shopping for a client, and traffic had been terrible, and parking had been terrible, and everything had it'd been kind of a rough day, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm at the checkout, and someone comes up to me, and she's like, are you Melissa? And I'm like, yes, I am. And it was awesome because it was someone that listened to the podcast that recognized me, and that was hilarious. And she was so sweet. So this is a shout out to Shannon of Room for Life Organizing. So excited to meet you. And Shannon and I are going to get together soon and chat about organizing and all that good stuff. But the point of the story is that she was like, oh, my gosh, I love the podcast so much. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I haven't put an episode up in a while. Things have been crazy. And she's like, oh, it's okay." And so anyway, I just want to apologize to everyone. I got to apologize to Shannon in person. But now I can apologize to all of you remotely and just say, I know it's been a hot minute since I had a podcast up, but I have been super, super busy revamping our entire Inspired Organizer course for our relaunch coming up soon. And I now am back in the groove of making sure that we've got good podcasts up as we start to cruise into summer. So anyway, whether you see me in the container store in human person, or if you ever send me an email, I love hearing from podcast listeners. And um, it was great to meet Shannon in person. But today I have an awesome episode for you. This was one that I recorded with my friend and with one of our mentors in Inspired Organizer, Cabri Carpenter of Minimize Then Organize in Lubbock, Texas. And I'm going to be honest with you, we might hurt a few people's feelings today, but I swear it's out of a sense of love. So part of our job here is to help you make your business operate better. And that is what we are doing here today. So I would love for you to listen. This is going to be a two-part episode because Cabri and I ended up talking about a ton of different things. So I wanted to break it up into a couple of episodes, but the great news is I'm going to give you both of those episodes this week. So stay tuned today. And then in a couple days, I will add the second episode. And so that's my little bit of makeup for being gone for the last few weeks. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. And then also, if you would like to spend another hour with me, I would love to spend an hour with you. Our free workshop, The Pro Organizer's Profit Plan, is up 24-7, 365 at poroadmap.com. I would love to have you join me there. All right, let's get going with Cabri. All right, you ready? Ready. This is one of those cases where we should probably record before we record because we have we have a lot of feelings. We love having feelings, don't we? We do. And so we're just going to bring you a podcast of things that we talk about privately that we want everyone to know about. Is that fair? I I feel like I should apologize for the feelings I'm going to hurt. No, here's the thing. We only hurt feelings because we care. We do. That is the thing. That is, this is coming from a place of love. Yes. And concern and likely your sanity and possibly your profits. So it's like. Sanity, money, time. We're going to try to give you some time back. We're going to try to give you more money. We're going to, we're going to try to do a lot of things with you today. And one, this may be a silly example, but I think about it a lot. I did something one day. I have a group of women that I've worked with over the years, and they do not do anything close to what I do now. But occasionally, you know, I'll throw something out there and be like, hey, this is a thing that I made for the work that I do. And I had this sales page I was really proud of. And I sent it. I was like, hey, this is my thing that I made. Tell me I'm a pretty, pretty princess. And all three of them were like, it's really nice. But I noticed this and I noticed this. All three of them sent things back and are like, Here's something you should look at. And this button doesn't work. And and like my feelings were hurt for a minute. And then I go, no, they're actually trying to help me. So that's what we're trying to do today. We are. We are. That is that is honestly it. It comes from a place of love. And it really is just one of the things that we see other organizers doing that we want to make everybody better. Yeah. I always think about it, too, in terms of when we work with clients and we sometimes see things that they can't see because they're looking at their stuff every day. So like that sales page, I looked at it so long that I couldn't see it. So that Mm -hmm. we're just trying to help you see these things. So what are we talking about, Cabri? We're going to talk about simplifying the overthinking brain of an organizer. I'm sorry. Are you trying to imply that organizers are overthinkers? 
For sure. And I honestly can say that I have gotten better at it. But if you put some of the situations that we're going to talk about today in front of me five years ago, I also was guilty for overthinking and overprocessing and over systemizing and yeah. doing all of it. If I could encapsulate what we're going to talk about, and we're going to stop saying what we're going to talk about and talk about it, but <laughs> if I could encapsulate it, I think what we're trying to do is get people to realize that there are things that make sense to implement in your business. And then there is a way to take that so far that you might actually be vastly overcomplicating what you're doing. Can you start us off with an example of something that you're seeing that you're like, oh, I just, I want people to maybe not do this. So the first one, and Melissa and I both talked about this previously. It was an organizer that kind of was in my exposure. We'll say that. And I don't want to call them out and I don't want to like create insult, but I do think that what we're going to talk about is something that other people do as well. And it's not just one person. It's, it's, we see, these are things that we see all of the time. Literally all the time, which is crazy because it's, we are like as organizers, we overthink things and then we bring it into our business and create more work for ourselves on accident. So one of the things that I saw was an organizer who was using Google Calendar to get her subcontractors to submit their availability. And so that was like one calendar on Google Calendar. And then she would turn around on the scheduling side, implement that into a second calendar, but she would also email that to the client themselves. Then she would take those same sessions and put them into some sort of timesheet tracker so that her subcontractors knew where they were supposed to be, what project they were working on, et cetera. Essentially, three pieces of the same information going into three separate platforms, systems, softwares, whatever you want to call it. And I asked her, I was like, could you put it into one? And there was no way. Like she had just done it for so long that that was how it was going to be. She had it. It worked for them. And that was how it was going to be. In the back of my head, I was thinking my organizers, my subcontractors would kill me if I had them submit their availability, send it on one calendar, and then put it into another calendar. In the back of my head, I was like, I don't want to do all that. That's a lot of time and energy and effort on my part mm -hmm. to communicate the same piece of information three separate ways. So, yeah. Well, I think you're bringing up a really important point, which is that we get in a rut of we've always done it this way. Therefore, this is how it goes. And what we don't always look at is not only is there a better way to do it or a simpler way or a more efficient way, but also how much time am I spending doing that? Because we're just so used to just doing it. Yes. That we don't account for how much actual time it takes to yes. triplicate our work. Yes. I can add on to that. This is a different thing, but this woman was a subcontractor and she has to submit her hours on a handwritten paper in triplicate, like a piece of business paper. That, and I was like, what? It's not even digital? Nope, it not even digital. 2023. We Just, do not have time for that. We, we do not. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, when you have a situation like that, so when you hear something like that, as someone who has a team, well, tell me, tell us what you do for your team. So we have one calendar. We have normally a Monday meeting that we have for an hour to two hours, depending on what we have going on that week. And they'll tell me, hey, I have a hair appointment. I'm going to leave early this day. Or kids have doctor's appointments. I'm going to be out for however long this time. Of course, I'm in Texas and they are true subcontractors, so I can't force them to be some, somewhere at a specific time. And so I just tell them, ideally, we would like to start the sessions at 9 a.m. And they say, well, I'll be there at 9.15 because I have to drop off my kids at yada, yada, whatever. So we have those types of conversations and I just make a note of it. And they have access to our company calendar that has client names, areas of focus, when we're going to be there, the address. They have all that information. It's also backed up in HoneyBook as well. So that if they get lost or if, you know, something crazy happens, like Google Calendar crashes, they know where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing. But it's a very simple system. Sometimes, like everybody else, I can overthink it. And so sometimes I do ask them, is this redundant? Is this too much? Are we adding too many unnecessary steps that don't actually accomplish anything? I think as you're telling the story, I think back a lot on my prior business life. A lot of times when you work in big corporations, you have things where you're like, this is so much work and it doesn't make sense. It's like that movie Office Space where they're like, we have to turn in your TPS report. <laughs> and I know I'm dating myself, but if you haven't seen that movie, it's great. 
but like we just have these processes that we are required to go through because someone decided that this needed to be a process five years ago and we never look and say does that actually make sense and you can tell me if you agree with this since i don't run a team but do you often find too that you have subcontractors that can give you good ideas of like hey have you ever thought about doing that oh absolutely they have amazing ideas and it's become very much apparent in 2023 i was trying really hard to remove myself from the business of the day-to-day -day stuff so that I could focus on growing and scaling and some of the other things that we wanted to focus on. And so we have our Monday meetings and they come to me and say, hey, we noticed this with client XYZ. Could we try this over here or could we do something different here? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Y'all are the ones that are with clients all day. Like I'm not anymore. So right. why not make it work for you? Right. I think the biggest thing that we want to talk to people about is just the flexibility. To, you don't have to write something down and then it's written in stone forever and ever and ever in your business. From your branding all the way through to tiny little processes, there is absolutely nothing in your business that you can't say, this doesn't work for me anymore and I need to change it. And that includes processes that even if you spent a lot of time coming up with them, they can change. I feel like we are a lot like our clients in that aspect is because I know I'm sure you have been here too. You have a client who they spend a lot of, a lot of time doing something or they spent a ton of money yes. buying something. And then you have that guilt and that shame of, well, I can't let it go. I spent thousands of dollars on it. Let's just put it at the top of the closet. Let's just keep it. Let's just, and we do the same exact thing in business to where we're keeping systems or platforms or processes that don't work for us, that don't make sense, that might be redundant, that might be costing us time and energy and effort, or making our team members and subcontractors absolutely batty because yes. they don't make sense or because they're too time consuming. We're just holding on to them because we spent a lot of time working on them. And we often, and I'm going to give you a concrete example of this in one second, but we often then don't even realize how much money, time, energy, and effort we're putting into continuing to use something that doesn't work for us because we spent that money on it. So we bought that expensive sweater that we never wore, so we have to keep it in our closet. What if that sweater kept costing you money? What if your client had to keep paying for the sweater over and over again? That's the difference in business. We keep paying for the sweater. And that is such a good analogy not using it. That is such a good analogy. And we do. And you can tell. I mean, so being in the IO group, I think that you can kind of see there are certain organizers who come and ask questions. And sometimes this group is great for just needing a second set of eyes or a sounding board or somebody, that person who loves you and also understands the back end of the business that can say, hey, you're overcomplicating things. It's like, drop it, let it go. Or if you're stuck somewhere and you're like, I have this platform, I have this service, I have this thing that I need to accomplish. How do I do it? They can also jumpstart and jump kick you into actually taking action to fix the problem. It's a great mix of having both, but we see it in the organizers. We see it in the people who are overthinking things or overcomplicating things for no reason other than we've done it for a long time. We put a lot of time and effort and mental energy into it. And so, yeah, we're going to hold on to it. We're going to, this is our sweater that we're going to keep paying for and yeah. hanging in our closet, even though it makes no sense. It's costing yeah. us time and energy. And the sweater doesn't fit. And I will also add onto that. It's not just that investment. It's also whatever you want to call it, FOMO, comparisonitis, whatever. It's all these other organizers are doing this. So I must need to do it too. And the biggest example I see a lot is a CRM is there are people I think that are like, well, everybody else seems to be using HoneyBook, Dubsado, HubSpot, whatever. I have to do that too. If you are a person that needs a piece of paper and a pen, then you don't need it. And we see that a lot too, is over complicating the system that you need because everyone else is doing something. I agree with that completely. And I think you could even break that down to like bare bones and say, they're overcomplicating it because they think that's what they should be doing. So yes. like organizer who is in the process of getting started, they're spending money on social media managers. They're spending money on marketing and branding materials. They're spending money on all these different things, but they have maybe worked with one client. And in the back of my head, I ask, are you making money? Do you actually enjoy organizing? Have, have, you, have you asked yourself those two questions before you yeah. invested all this time and energy 
all these yep. different things that you're working on in the back end. Is this even something you want to do? Is this something yeah. you even enjoy? Are you are you making money? Whether you're just starting out or whether you're growing to a team or even wanting to scale farther than that, you have to walk before you can run. And you have to actually make sure you enjoy what you're doing. And there's a lot of organizers that we've seen exit the industry as well because of burnout or because they didn't have the support that they needed. They weren't charging enough and they realized very quickly, $20, $40, $60 is yeah. not worth it. Yeah. This is, I wish every organizer I ever meet, I'm like, what's your, what's your prices? And before I even hear what they have to say, I'm like, you should probably raise your prices. Just yeah. to get on the safe side. Yeah. I actually did a, a video recently where I just, I walked through like my journey of learning how to price things, which it was a journey. And one of the things that I say all the time to people is I made all the mistakes so that you don't have to. But one of the parts of this video was I just, I really wanted to tell people what my journey was on pricing. I said, the one thing I wish I would have known in my business early on that it took me a while to learn is what I was actually worth and what our services are actually worth. And so whenever I see some of the things that we're talking about, you're not making enough money to, off you have to make enough money to offset some of these things that are less pleasant to you. Yes. That goes two ways. So I was just listening to you and I heard it kind of separate. Okay. So one of them is like, everybody needs to learn their worth and know what their time is worth. And that will also dictate the types of clients that you attract and where you spend your time and energy. And then the other side of that, going back and tying back to overcomplicating things is your time is worth money. It is. Absolutely. So don't be spending your time overcomplicating things or overthinking things or making so many processes and procedures that you're just wasting time. You're wasting your own time. Yes. I'm sure that there, every organizer, if there was, we should do this. We should make like an audit of some sort yeah. as far as like how your business runs on the back end. Self audit and find 10 to 15% more profit or what they would pay themselves as owner compensation just in the time and energy that they are overcomplicating things on the back end. Okay. So I always think of lawyers. I don't know how, many, how much people know about lawyers, but typically lawyers bill in 15 minute increments and they have to account for every 15 minutes, depending on where you work, you have to account for every 15 minutes of your entire day. And by the way, sometimes those days are 16 hour days and they bill in those 15 minute increments. I have suggested to organizers that I coached before, I want you to do an audit of your day. Now you don't maybe have to go to the 15 minute increment, but I want you to say, I spent 25 minutes working on buying products for Susie's Pantry. I spent an hour and a half doing drop-offs. I spent two hours at the container store, blah, 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 all of this time. And I want you to figure out where you have time gaps and where you are wasting time or where you're not being efficient. And I want you to say, I charge $100 an hour. So I spent $500 worth of my time today doing stuff. And where can I get some of that time back? I'm going to ask you a tough question that I did not prepare you for. I'm ready. How much percentage of time as business owners should we be focused solely on not supporting roles, not supporting tasks, not the menial necessities, but how much time each day should we be committing to actual income producing events? It's a great question. I would say, I don't what know. That I gut, what does your gut say? So I don't think I can give you a, an amount of time a day, but I think that you should say at least 20% of your time should be dedicated to making sure your funnel is, if you're talking about the entirety of like building your business and making yeah. sure that you have consistent clients, it should be 20% of your time. I was thinking about it. I, I probably put probably 50% of my time, which of course we have a team yeah. and I'm and supporting multiple people here. I was just so I understand. Say, I think that's the the key difference that you're talking about is you are on a team and mm -hmm. so you're not doing organizing on site as much. Yes. So if you are the CEO of a team versus if you are actually doing the organizing yourself, if you're a solo organizer. Yes. That would be so interesting to see kind of as a as our group, you know, yeah. where they're at in their business, whatever stage, how they run their business, what that looks like. Here's my flip side to you is even if your number is 50 and my number might be 20 or 30, I suspect the amount of time that people are actually spending is a lot lower. And that's where the problem comes in. I would agree with that 100%. And I would also use this as the time like on this podcast to challenge other organizers to figure out what that number is and then try to multiply it. We see yeah. so much of that in the group of like, 
things have slowed down. How do I find new leads? Yes. Or I have a couple of leads, but they're not A plus ideal clients. Or right. I want to work in luxury million dollar homes with the famous home builders of my city, whatever that looks like. I want to know how much time you're actually committing to making that an income producing task to work right. with those people. That'd be fascinating. Over. How often are we spending time working on one of the things I think about a lot is the urgent versus the important. How much time are you spending working on the things that are like, they might be easy, but they're time consuming, Yes, you know, or um, am I spending time working on things that are actually going to make me money versus the things that either I just think I'm supposed to be doing, or I'm spending time on things that are not going to bring me anything down the road, but I feel like I have to do them. Mm -hmm. So the, the number of people that I talk to where I'm like, when was the last time you sent an email newsletter out? Oh, like six months ago. Cool. I need you to do one in the next week. Well, but I have a lot of th other things going on. Yep. Cool. I'm trying to make you money. What are the things that you are either not doing at all or the things that you are purposely neglecting because you're working on something that's urgent versus important or versus revenue producing. I'm going to add a third one and say, or the things that you are overcomplicating or making redundant yes. or whatever that could rather be focused on income producing conversations and activities. Right. Well, the other thing too, and and I, I'm only talking about this because she has outed herself on the podcast already, but there is someone in our group that is lovely and I've worked with her for a couple of years now, but Kim Snodgrass, who talked very openly on the podcast about, and by the way, she admitted, I told her not to do this, but she really thought that she had to implement Dubsado and, and she did, she doesn't like technology. She doesn't enjoy it. So the amount of time that she was trying to force that to work when I'm like, no, but can you go write an email newsletter? Can you go, you know, optimize your website? Can, when was the last time you posted on Google business? When was the last time you went to a networking event? You know, things like that. And the, some of these examples were not things I actually talked about with her, but you know, how much time are you spending trying to, to put one of these pieces, these overcomplicated pieces into place when you could be doing other income producing activities? And by the way, this is not a rip on CRMs. If you have a CRM you love, and we teach people CRMs, I love teaching people CRMs because for the right people, it is right for your business, but that doesn't mean it's right for everybody. I will say there was a learning curve when I implemented HoneyBook, but yeah. I will also be 1000% honest that it took me having a team before I finally decided I need something a little bit more. Before that, guess what? Spreadsheets yeah. and a piece of paper and a Google calendar was plenty sufficient. I did not need any yes. extra fancy technology. And that is the point we're trying to make is it's sort of like when we talk about social media, nothing is all good or all bad. It is about what you need in your business. And what we don't want people to do is to say, I'm required to have X, Y, and Z. You're not. You're required to have what you need for the phase of business you're in. If you have one client, a spreadsheet and a piece of paper might work fine for you. Unless you're a super techie person and you're like, it is exciting to me to think about setting up this process for further down the road. Cool, do it. But if you are forcing yourself to do something before you need it, you're just, you're wasting your time when you could be spending your time working on things that really do build your business. And if you're any of those people listening to this that need numbers or very distinct boundaries as to what that looks like, that was about $80,000 in gross sales for me okay. before I finally committed and said, okay, we're going to step it up and do something else. But this is the, the biggest thing that I think we want to get across to people is remaining flexible about what you do, how you do it, when you do it. And there is no checklist for what is the exact right time to do anything, whether that is <laughs> starting your business, whether that is implementing a CRM, whether that is building a team, there, there's no like, okay, if you've only been in business two months, then you can't do X, Y, Z. What we want you to do is look at your own backyard and say, what do I actually need? Not what the person next to me is doing, not what the person that I see on social media is doing. What do I actually need? I really do love that. I had a coach previously who she used the alphabet as a system. Yeah. And she always used the analogy talking about dating. She said some people, they begin, you know, that level A as that's when they start talking. And then level C might be like the first date. And like level E might be the first. For some people, though, 
that first kiss is level A. Yeah. And so there's a flow and a progression to everything. And you do not have to compare one versus the other. You just have to figure out what your level A is and what your level Z is and yeah. how you get from A to Z. One of the th things that we see a lot is because organizers are organized, <laughs> we have a list of we have to do the following things. And, the, and this is the progression. And I have to have all these things in place. It's like you have to know beforehand, before you go to a client, you have to know what the end of the pantry is going to look like. The skill you actually need to learn is that flexibility to be able to pivot when you need to, whether that is at a client, whether that, and by the way, sometimes at a client, every hour you have to pivot. I had a client the other day, I've been doing this a long time. I had a client the other day that we were like on a path and then I could just tell her attention was just gone. And so I'm like, cool, even though we've only been doing this 45 minutes, I need to figure out how to pivot because I want to keep her happy, right? You have to do that in your business too. Your business has certain things that needs to keep it happy. It doesn't mean that you're going to do the same thing all day, every day, every month, every year. I think a lot of us saw it if we were in business during COVID and struggling through supply chains and that kind of thing. I will say I have not, even since then, I have at times had to kind of use excuses like that or just be completely yeah. honest and say like, hey, I'm sick. I feel like crap. I want to go home. I don't want to finish this session. Yeah. Or, hey, by the way, all that product I ordered, something happened with Senex. It's delayed. Don't know where it's at, but it might be yeah. here tomorrow. It might be here next week. Not a single time. Have I had a client, whether that's a B client, an A plus client, a $10,000 project, a $500 project, never have I had somebody who just gets angry or upset or leaves a bad review. Nine times out of 10, even more than that, 99% of the time, they're happy, they're fine. They're like, yeah, just bring it by whenever, finish it yeah. up whenever you're feeling better. It's not a big deal. So that was episode one with Cabri. Next up will be our second episode where we talk about operating out of fear and all sorts of other things. So stay tuned for that. And again, if you would like to join me at our free workshop, hit poroadmap.com for that. And I will see you soon. Bye organizers.